gone ablaze. What is this? White... <laughs> White smoke? Surely the gas is kind of cause of this. I've never seen anything like it. You think it may be arson? Too early to say, Sheriff. At this rate, it's going to take us all night to put it out. I'm afraid none of it will be salvageable. Do what must be done, George. Over a hundred years of knowledge and education. Lost just like that. Rothman will be devastated. The flame's been put out, Sheriff. I'm sorry we couldn't save the Foundation. As long as everyone's safe, that's all that matters. Soto, Edwards, get in there and investigate. Make sure there are no bodies. God, it stinks in here. It smells like rotten meat. You hear that? Something in here with us? Not after that fire. Couldn't be. There is someone in here. Hello? Who's there? I think it came from this way. What's this? It's a book, Soto. We're in a university. There's tons of them. Jesus Christ, man. Use your head. No, it feels different, looks different, it's not burnt. Let's try this way. Just to recap the mission briefing, you emissaries are driving towards Foxwood, Massachusetts. We're well aware of Foxwood's reputation after the 1964 incident. After all, that was the final straw that helped get this department built in the first place. According to our data, there's been a rapid increase in seismic activities as well as reports of seeing strange creatures in the vicinity. We believe them to be atrocities. Your job is to go into the recently renovated Foxwood and investigate. Archivist and scientist, this is your time to shine. You boys will be guided by the proficient, the navigator, and Roosevelt as you traverse these lands. God help you all, and always remember the Department of Atrocities secures a safer tomorrow. So, Foxwood. I'm surprised they even rebuilt it after all that happened. I thought it was declared a no-zone. Seems like the locals disregarded what the government advised. Would it be the first time? It will be 20 years in October. Christ. President Scott sent us to the outskirts of Foxwood in the late 60s to reevaluate any evidence gathered on the incident. He had us interrogate a few officers who invested that night. Had us look through old legal documents. Crazy to think that there were no emissaries back then to immediately assess the situation. Times have definitely changed within the last 20 years. I've never been here personally, but any emissary already knows the Quentin Sanders case in now. I remember reading up about the Mind Corruptor in my training course. It was said to get inside your mind and distort your perception of reality. It always gave me the creeps. What do you think happened to all of them anyway? Quentin and Dorothy, they just kind of disappeared, right? 
No trace of their bodies was found. Sometimes mysteries in this strange world don't get solved. You'll learn that's for the better sooner or later, son. The sun's coming up on the horizon. We'll find a local inn, stash our equipment, and head out. A room for four, madam. The biggest rooms we have are only two beds. We don't get many visitors here in Foxwood. Oh, you people call this place an inn? No wonder why you don't have any visitors. Excuse me? Uh, you must excuse my friend here. Now, that's perfectly understandable. We'll take two rooms then. Do you feel uneasy? Whenever we're outside, I feel like somebody's watching us. That receptionist gave me the creeps, like she wasn't all there. Glad it's not just me. We're sitting atop an atrocity gold mine. I've heard nothing but bad things about this place. I should be in my office right now filing documents, but instead, they want me to be doing field work. Hey, you boys about ready? We'll be just fine. As long as we stick together and don't venture far off, we'll be safe. We're the guys to stop the monsters after all. We're going to start by scanning the vicinity and searching for any seismic irregularities. Scientist, do you have the device? It's a glove. I call it the fabric warp. What's it do? Well, you see, atrocities exist all around us, right? We're all ever slightly hussed, which allows us to see them and battle them. But sometimes a few may slip under our noses. This is because they originate from a fourth dimensional hyperspace. This device warps the fabric of space-time, basically bending it to our will. It helps to detect those little gremlins within the vicinity, even if our third dimensional perceptions can't fully visualize them. It's like an advanced radar. Now, I haven't perfected it, but being in such a hot spot, this is the perfect opportunity to test it out. <laughs> Due to Foxwood's reputation, people may just be spooked and hallucinating strange creatures. Hell, we may even just be hunting earthquakes. But that device will help us know for sure. Alright, get the scanner. Navigator, trail behind. Make sure nobody tells us or sees what we're doing here. Understood, sir. Where should we search first? We're gonna ask around. See exactly what type of monsters the townsfolk have been seeing. We'll see if it connects anyhow to the seismic activities. Split up, ask some questions, and regroup here later this evening. If anyone questions who you are, just tell them you're a private investigator. Can't have them getting nervous that the government's intervening. This creature... You said was rotting your supplies? Yes, sir. I woke up yesterday morning. All my cattle were dead. Their eyes were sunken into their sockets. They looked emaciated and frail. Uh, and I, I fed them well all their lives. They got like that overnight. No man or living creature could have done that to them. Uh, demons are here in Foxwood. They live out there. In the forest. <coughs> Is truly cursed. Are you all right, sir? Do you need some water? No. Don't drink the water. That's cursed, too. But leave this town at once, boy. Won't do you any good trying to save it. We're already damned. Mr. Soto was right. Mr. Soto? He lives up there on the hill. Near the shore. <coughs> he was there. The night of the fire. The poor bastard's gone mad, they say. Too obsessed with that damn book of his. Book? Who's there? Hello, sir. I'm a, uh, a private investigator. I was hoping to ask you some questions about the area. Come to laugh at the man, have you? Everyone else does. They never leave me alone. Day and night. Not at all, sir. They say you were there on the night of the fire. What you saw that night, is that similar to what's been happening recently? Recently? It's never left. It speaks to me. I've tried destroying it, but... but... Okay, you, you, you need to leave, now. What the hell?
Just leave me alone. Leave me alone. I've done everything you asked for. Just leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Any luck, gentlemen? There's definitely one or more atrocities in the vicinity. They all seem to come from the forest on the outskirts of the town. That's what I gathered, too. It all leads back to the forest. I don't think they're physically attacking any of the residents, but their mere presence is rotting livestock. I can't help but think it's the husked stage. It's even driven some townsfolk mad. If I may, gentlemen, continue Roosevelt. According to my map of Foxwood, it seems the general direction the atrocities are coming from is aligned with the location of Foxwood University. Which could only mean... There's nothing there, Roosevelt. There can't be. Nearly all of it burned down. Keyword. Nearly. Yeah, it's worth a shot, sir. That's the only place we haven't looked. All right, man. Keep your heads up and your eyes open. We're going to Foxwood University. Storms brewing up. There's the university. All this wreckage is still here. They never bothered cleaning it up. Seems like the people of Foxwood left this as a memorial of sorts. I'm assuming, anyway. Untouched, undisturbed. Exactly how it was left back in 1964. After everything that happened, I'd consider it cursed land. I wouldn't want to build anything here either. The storm. All right, <clears throat> time to use your machine, son. See if your theory is correct. This data is off the charts. I've never seen anything like it. I I'm picking up multiple atrocities all around us. Did that table just change? What are you talking about, navigator? The scientists pointed the fabric warp in this direction, and it reconstructed this old table. It rejuvenated it. Scientists, watch where you point that thing. We don't want to disturb anything now. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. This way. The signal is stronger over here. There should be a stairwell nearby that takes us to the lower level. I don't think you wish to go down there, gentlemen. I fear there's a reason this place was never torn completely to the ground. It's not a matter of not wanting to demolish the ruins, rather they're unable to. Physically unable to. Are those bodies coming out of the stairwell? They died. Asked. Let's see here. Joshua Nelson. His driver's license expired in 1972. This one here, uh, Brandon McCarthy. His license expired in 75. These bodies are old. Surely they were just squatters. A couple of hooligans going somewhere they shouldn't have. But this place has been abandoned for years. I mean, nobody's touched it since 1964, right? There's nothing here. There can't be. The bodies say otherwise, Archivist. I sense an ungodly presence within the vicinity. The signal peaks down here, at the basement level. What the hell? More bodies. Are these emissaries? But uh, how? When did this happen? They all died. Husked again. What could have caused this? God, what is that smell? <coughs> we 
need a light on in here. Oh my god. It, is that? Oh, Jesus Christ. What the hell is this doing down here? The director informed the department that the body was properly disposed of. Oh god. The smell of it. I feel sick. Place Roosevelt in the other room. Now! Get him out of here. My years in the department, the mind corruptor was one force of nature that always sent shivers down my spine. What do we do with the body? Why is it even here? More importantly, why hasn't it decomposed already? It's been down here for two decades. Or has it? This is definitely ground zero. It seems like everything is stemming from this basement, from the mind corruptor. Yeah, and what I want to know is, why are there three dead emissaries inside of this basement? Why weren't we told about this? Maybe the director told them to dispose of the body, but the hostage got to them before they were able to. But we were told they dealt with it. Then that would mean the director lied. Is it safe to be in here with it? We should go. We are not leaving until this is resolved, Archivist. Scientist, is the Mind Corruptor truly responsible for this surge in atrocity activity, or, or is, is it something else? I think its corpse is being used as a gateway between realities of sorts. They pass through it. I do remember in Sanders' tapes it spoke of releasing more of its brothers and sisters from the Abyss. This is what it was referring to. I wonder if the husk stage is as prominent with a corpse this old as opposed to a fresh one. Well, it seemed to bother Roosevelt. How's everyone feeling? Check your vitals. Clear. Just disgusted by the stench. I'm fine. Me too. For once, I don't know how to proceed. I must inform the director of this that there's no reason he'd lie to us. Yes, hello, sir. I have new information regarding the troubles in Foxwood. We ventured into the university and found the body of the mind corruptor in the basement. Now, I was told it had been properly disposed of. Why is it still here? Sir? The body was disposed of. What are you talking about? Well, clearly not, sir. All of us are looking at it right now. It's exactly where it was found, in, a, in accordance with the photographs the police took. What do we do now? Back in 1965, the emissaries took the body into the woods and disposed of it. Or so we've been told. Now, I've seen the case file for myself back at the crypt. I don't know how this is possible unless we... Try destroying the body somehow. We're going to have to, sir. The atrocities activity in this area will only get worse if we don't. I'm sure as much as you boys would love to go back into your comfy motel beds, I'm afraid we're going to have to spend the night here. With that thing? We'll stray as far from it as possible, but we must remain on the university grounds. sleep. You know what that thing down there? I've seen atrocities before, but that... I can't even look at it for long without feeling sick. I hope my device hasn't been making things worse. The navigator didn't take too kindly to it. What was it doing anyway? De-aging stuff? Uh, how is that possible? I don't think it's the de-aging stuff, but rather restoring things to how they were before the fire. 
After all, it does warp space-time. Watch. Haven't seen that warning sign before. I wonder what would happen if I... Scientist? Yeah? Do that again. It looked like someone was trying to come through. It couldn't be the Cosmic Wanderer again, could it? No. It looked like two people. They both looked human. <sighs> but how? What's going on? Where am I? How? Dorothy. Dorothy. How did you do that? I, I, I don't know. I, I must warp the reality. Dorothy, wake up. I just... Fission is going to kill us for this. You told me to do it. She's not responding. You people need to help me. She hit her head. She's not waking up. Mr. Sanders, my name is the Archivist. This here is the Scientist. We're emissaries. We work for the United States Department of Atrocities and... Wish. Slow down! Where am I? You're in Foxwood, Massachusetts. The year is 1984. We're going to need you no, to... No, the, the year is 1964. It's October 31st. We were fighting off the, the mind corruptor, and Dorothy lit the compendium on fire, made the whole university go up in flames. I'm sure this is very disorienting, sir, but we need you to remain calm. It was my machine, you see. I may or may not have proved the theory of time travel or the hypothetical Einstein-Rosenbridge. I don't know what happened. I... Enough about that. We need to get Dorothy to the medical ward quickly. The mind corruptor's coming. It, it, it was just here. Get the proficient. Quick. I'm on it. I'm here, Dorothy. Your head's all bruised. What in God's God. green earth? Scientists, what did you do? Do you know who they are? I, I I can explain. This is getting worse. Do you think I can't see that navigator? Get this young lady medical attention. Now, can somebody tell me what the hell is going on here? Sir, this is the doings of the fabric warp. I can explain. That's enough, scientist. Put that device down before you bring anything else back. Mr. Sanders, I'm gonna have to ask you to step into the other room with me. I'm not going anywhere until I'm told what's going on. Who are you people? Why does the university book this way? Sir, Why is... I understand this is a lie for you. Hell, I don't even know how this is possible. But I need you to remain calm and come with me into the other room. I will explain everything. Do you smoke? No. Fair enough. This is going to sound like a weird nightmare. How best to explain it? I spent the last two weeks studying a book that made me see unholy creatures. Fought off a, a mass of flesh that consumed the Dean, Mr. Rothman. I'm sure whatever you're about to tell me won't be so surprising. That's the thing, Mr. Sanders. It hasn't been the last two weeks. It's been nearly 20 years, my boy. 20 years since the Foxwood incident, where you, Dorothy Conroy, Harold Rothman, died in the fires, or so we thought. What? You unintentionally made quite the name for yourself, kid. Your tapes were the only few things that survived the fire. Oh, God. People listened to those. Many people did. But because of you, we're here now. President Alexander Scott won the 1964 election riding off the fear of what happened in Foxwood, which later helped establish us. Who are you? We're the emissaries. Those beings you studied, those atrocities. We searched for and destroyed them at the request of the United States government. We've studied the husk stage and we're working on ways to cure it. The husk stage? Ah, right. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm afraid that's what you have. That sickness you developed. It's when you've been exposed to an atrocity that's hostile in nature. It makes you sick. And I'm sorry to say it kills you. No, it's a bit different for everyone. You see, some take hours to die, and 
Others can take months. As long as Dorothy is okay, that's all that matters. I don't care what happens to me. Now, I can't promise anything, son. But we will look out for you. I don't know how any of this is possible, but we'll find out together. In doing so, we're gonna need your help. You're the only one to read the compendium in its entirety that, that we know of. I need you to take some time and try to remember anything that you can from that book that could help us figure out what's going on here in Foxwood. Understood. Morning, boys. How's Miss Conroy doing? Her vitals are stable. She just hasn't regained consciousness yet. And how are you, Mr. Sanders? Surprisingly well. Still have a bit of a cough, but my head feels a bit clearer. You two got close during your time at Foxwood, right? You could say that. I feel regret, I guess you could say, for bringing her into all of this. Like it's my fault. I should have told her to go when we evacuated the campus. I should have just done it all myself. Don't blame yourself, boy. If anything, it was that money-hungry bastard Rothman. He should have known when to leave well enough alone. He flew too close to the sun. But you don't have to worry about him anymore. Sir, what do we do about the Mind Corruptor? The Mind Corruptor? It's here? Hey, now, just relax, son. It's dead. We just need to dispose of the corpse somehow. I've been... I've been doing some writing, some sketching. Um, I remember from my notes that the Corrumpens Mentum, or Mind Corruptor, was a species of atrocity that thrived off power and deception. The author of the compendium, Benedict, wrote that it had a natural aptitude to corrupt one's perception of reality. The compendium was stacked with information. I have to try to remember more of it, but my head's all over the place right now. After the nightmares it had given me, I tried my hardest to block it all out. I do remember it getting a little startled when the university started burning down. Aversion to fire, eh? Well then, I say we burn the bastard's body. Take it into the forest and incinerate it. Navigator with me. Archivist and scientist, take Mr. Sanders and Miss Conroy to the local hospital. Sanders, if you remember anything else from the compendium, you let us know. It's massive. Christ, it stinks! Go around it. Try to lift it from that side. sure the others got to the hospital safely. Return when we have the right equipment. We burn it here. That's all to complain to me. Coming, sir? Yes, it's just that. Thought I heard that. Never mind. Dr. Hartman. Please report to room 17. Dr. Hartman, please report to you. You think she's going to make it? I hope so. If I remember correctly from his tapes, I think they're both hussed. Only time will tell. Did the profession say where they were going exactly? He said they were going to a store to buy gasoline. I guess they're taking Quentin's advice and they're going to burn it. What is wrong with this thing? Take it outside. Keep it away from me. I, I've done enough trouble. This place is like a maze. Oh, excuse me, miss. Can you direct me to the elevators? 
Miss, are you okay? Your nose is bleeding. Oh, I'm fine, thank you. The elevators are down the hall to your right. Is it picking up something? It's in the direction of Soto's house. Mr. Soto, are you there? Your door is open. What are these drawings? Looks kind of familiar. What are you still doing in this town? I told you to leave. You look troubled. What's wrong? Maybe I could help. It's voice. It hasn't left me alone for 20 years. It's only gotten worse. I can't do this anymore. Just relax. It's going to be all right. What voice do you hear? It sounds like the voice of a fallen angel. Deceptive. Manipulative. I've had enough. The people like town are of no help. Sometimes I feel like I'm the only one. I am the only one. You're not alone, sir. Why don't you come with me? I know people who can help you. There's nothing that can be done. Boy, it's, uh, it's too late. If I dare run, it'll only follow me. I've tried restoring the pages to give them strength, but it's never satisfied. I can't even destroy the damn thing if I wanted to. Pages? Do you mean this book? I found it the night of the fire. I should have never picked it up. But it called out to me. Spoke to me. The compendium? What's in your basement, Mr. Soto? It wants to be through story, so the dark evil can get out. But they can't in this state. You think I'm mad, don't you? I could take the book off your hands, sir. I know others who can take care of it. It must not leave this tabernacle or this house. Those people out there, they want it for themselves. And who knows when unspeakable abominations will escape when they get their filthy hands on it. You cannot trust them. Leave. Leave, boy. Leave! Two grown men in suits nearly buying the entire town's stock of gasoline. Not suspicious at all. <laughs> Everything alright, sir? I hate to sound like a broken record, but you've been rather off today. <laughs> Probably just my years into the apartment catching up to me. You ever thought about retiring? You're in your 60s now, right, sir? If it gets too much for you, you can... Once an emissary, always an emissary. You know that, navigator. I'll fight until my last breath. Secure the future or die trying. You know how it goes. Where the hell did it go? It's over here. Dragged itself across the room. Director, I have a code red alert. Repeat, I have a code red alert. We have an active hostile atrocity on site. God damn it. Sir, it's making noises. Oh, Jesus Christ. Its eyes are moving. The mouths are twitching. I think it's trying to speak. Where, where am I? Who are we speaking to? Uh, do you not know who I am? I am Harold Rothman, dean and owner of Foxwood University. Why can't I move? Is something holding me down? Sir, you, you are not in the right state to be moving. I don't know how to describe it. Why can't I move my head? What is this, a practical joke? Release me at once! I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Maybe I can go find a mirror. Dear God, Navigator, have mercy on the poor bastard. Sir, we're the emissaries. We work for the Department of Atrocities. You were involved in an incident with a, an atrocity that physically consumed your body. As a result, you've bonded with its very being. Atrocity? Oh, please. 
Let me guess, did Quinton put you up to this? Where is that boy? I ought to put his head on a pike for ruining my reputation like this. For putting me in such a compromising state. Sir, we're going to need you to remain calm. <sighs> we can't burn it like this. Please, gentlemen, don't hurt me. I, I didn't do anything wrong. Maybe that's what it wants us to think. What are you doing with that flame? It's a little chilly down here, wouldn't you say, Mr. Rothman? If that's who's really speaking. You're going to be okay, sir. We just need to get you medical attention immediately. Maybe there's a way we can extract you. Don't take another step, Navigator. I implore you, gentlemen, release me from whatever contraption this is! I have done nothing wrong! Sir! What are you doing? He needs to get to a hospital. You're going to kill him! He's already dead. So, you've seen it from our deception, as did Quentin and Dorothy. We sense their presence here. How can this be? They were dead. We killed them. Set that bastard on fire. <laughs> its body's expanding. It's changing. The flame isn't working. Open fire, man. Grab Roosevelt right now! We are leaving! For far too long we have laid dormant in our slumber, planting a seed for our return. Now we take what is rightfully ours. Hide it in a holy servant, and awaken our children of the abyss. Brother Benedict, on the morrow's first light, I shall take my leave. Brother Benedict, art thou attuned to my words? If the church were to unveil thy unholy endeavors, the horrific things you've inscribed, the creatures we've scrutinized here at Whitby. Let them come for me, Augustine. The truth must be told, no matter its heretical hue. Benedict. Old friend, I implore thee to grasp that the ultimate truth resides solely within the divine grace of our Creator. These nightmarish visions, which seem a twisted offering from Satan himself, should not blind thee to the fact. Canst thou truly believe that the tormented creature lurking in yonder cellar could be a creation of the Almighty? We must learn to open our eyes to the unholy truth. Refusing to believe in the atrocities won't make them cease to be. I will show you all in good time. I must first document my findings in great detail before presenting them to the church. Only to witness our labors condemned? Brother Benedict, we have toiled together for years, side by side. You know this well. I've stood beside you as steadfastly as you have stood by me. Yet this... I cannot be a party to it. This veers towards blasphemy. Be not astonished if the church becomes privy to these transgressions of yours. Don't thou perceive a threat in my writings, Augustine? Are you alright, sir? Uh, you fell asleep while writing down your notes. Fine. Just a nightmare. Are you sure you're all right? You look really pale. <coughs> I said I'm all right. <coughs> I just... I feel like something bad is coming. What's the building you were sketching? Was that in the compendium? No, but it was in the dream I just had. Dorothy, you're awake. What happened? What was that noise? You heard it too? 
it shook the ground. It, it felt like an earthquake. You guys, I think I just found the compendium. What? It's the proficient. I have to tell him, hello? Hello? Proficient? Listen to me, boy. Things didn't go quite to plan. When we went back and tried to dispose of the mind corruptor's body, it had awoken. Damn thing reanimated itself. Nearly corrupted the navigator's mind. You killed it, though, right? Not quite. It started expanding, growing new limbs and features. And where is it now? Well, that's the thing. It's coming after us. We're running back into town now. Listen carefully, both of you. I need you to escort Mr. Sanders and Miss Conroy out of the building and back to the van. They need to leave Foxwood as we find out how to neutralize the Sir, threat. Sir, I have information about the company. That's going to have to wait, Archivist. Now, do as I said. Pack your things and leave. But, sir, I... The longer we wait, the more likely Foxwood will be destroyed. It's spreading from the university grounds into the town. Just try to hide. Sir, the supposed atrocities the locals were complaining of, they're not on my radar. The foundation of the town appears to have changed as well. It looks as if the mind corruptor fooled us all, shrouding its evil doings from us. The veil has been lifted. What are you talking about, Roosevelt? It manipulated our perception. I'd say that the very thing its namesake says. I fear the mind corruptor more or less planned this the entire time. It must have had a psychic link to the abyss, which it channeled for the last 19 and a half years. Slowly but surely husking the town and surrounding area. Once it gathered enough power, it started manifesting itself through different means in the real world. Earthquakes and seismic activities were a side effect of this manifestation. Its presence, its influence, has never left Foxwood, sir. Plus the town, you say? That, that means... I fear the town is under the mind corruptor's control. We know the husk stage can deteriorate life, but what if an atrocity was evil enough to take advantage of it and manipulate the world of the living? But Foxwood has been rebuilt. Sure, it's not perfect, but they're doing a lot better in recent years. My data says otherwise, Navigator. After this revelation came to me, I've been doing some digging on any construction files on record. Foxwood was never rebuilt. It's been an abandoned ghost town for the past two decades. But that's not right. They... The people, the buildings, they're all but an illusion, gentlemen, puppets of the mind corruptor. That means the others are in immense danger. We need to get back to the hospital. Now. Remember what I said, sir, the town, your surroundings, and the people may not be what they seem. Tread carefully, gentlemen. I thought they'd be back by now. You don't think... I don't feel right leaving without them. I'm so confused. How is any of this possible? I thought for sure we were going to die that night. That's what I thought. But we have a second chance, Dorothy. We cannot waste it. Oh, come on, let's get these cords off of here. Excuse me, gentlemen. This woman needs rest. You cannot be touching this equipment. I'm sorry, ma'am, but we have strict orders from the government to escort this young woman out of the hospital. What are you doing? Get your hands off me! Ma'am, get your hands off him. You can't fool us, atrocity. Oh, guys, what are you still doing here? We need to leave, now! What the hell was wrong with her? They're not real. Nothing's real. The illusion is broken. The veil has been lifted. Roosevelt has theorized that this was all a ploy, orchestrated by the mind corruptor. Everything was an illusion? Everything, down to the smallest detail. The, the people, the, the buildings, it was all a distraction. Corrupted our minds before we even set foot in Foxwood. What now? Where do we go? You two lovebirds, come with us. Where are you taking us? We need to take you away from Foxwood, that's for certain. Sir, if I may, I was trying to tell you something earlier. There's this town madman, Jack Soto. Does that ring a bell? That one police officer. 
What about him? He has the compendium, or what's left of it, in his house. It's been driving him crazy for the past two decades. He lives on the hill near the shoreline, unless he was part of the illusion too. It's worth a shot to investigate. Let's go. Not you, Mr. Sanders. I want the navigator to take you and this convoy out of Foxwood. You're in danger here. I can help. I, I know these creatures better than anyone. Probably better than you people. Maybe. But you've never gone up against one and survived. You were saved by the grace of God from the scientist's machine. Mr. Sanders has a point, sir. He could guide us. If the rest of the compendium is in the hands of Mr. Soto, it could rekindle Quentin's memory. All right, fine. But stay close. We can't afford to lose anyone. Sir? Sir? The Mind Corruptor's minions are here. They're all hushed and reanimated. Dear God. Navigator, take them both downstairs. Use the back door. Archivist, scientist, with me. We're going to give him a head start to the van. Navigator, if we aren't downstairs in three minutes, leave without us. Understood. I can't feel my legs. I'm scared, sir. Pay attention, scientist. Oh, God. Uh, proficient? I really admire all this bravery, but... I've never done battle. Sure, back at the crypt, I shot some of those creatures coming out of the wall. That was mainly you guys. Now, I know you can do this. That's why we brought you along. Remember your oath. An emissary defends his country no matter what. Now, fight with me. Even if it's the last goddamn thing you boys do. Protect Quentin Sanders. Protect Dorothy Conroy. Secure the future. Or die trying. that for your first proper atrocity fight? We're alive. These people are either missing limbs or suffering from weird mutations. Seems like the Mind Corruptor took the best parts of them to reanimate itself. And these are just the empty shells of their former selves. Day by day, the Mind Corruptor probably feasted on these poor bastards without them even knowing. The way they're all shaped looks like they were regurgitated. It spat back out what it didn't desire. I think the navigator already took off with Quentin and Dorothy. Can't blame him. He was just following orders. But we need to get to them fast before the mind corruptor catches up. If you're right about the compendium, I fear it'll be going to the same place as us. I was expecting them to come back by now. You two stay in here. I'm going to make sure the outside of the house is secure. It's all my fault. Don't say that, Quinton. None of this is your fault. But it is. Sure, Foxwood wasn't perfect, but you guys had the university. You had small businesses here. People, uh, students, and families living their best life. And now, if that talking machine is correct, and everything was destroyed, then it is my fault. All of this because I read the compendium. Now it won't stop. You're only here because I dragged you along too. So yes, Dorothy, and it is my fault. <coughs> Quentin, I... As stressful as all of this has been, spending it with you has made it all worthwhile. We're going to get through this. And we're going to get through it together. Look at me. We'll be okay. When all of this is over, I'll have to buy you a drink or take you out to eat. Something normal people do. Something that doesn't involve getting chased by these goddamn atrocities. Oh, Jesus Christ! Are you guys okay? Where's the navigator? He's investigating the property. We're here now. Let's get this over with. Uh, hello? Anyone home? Mr.
Mr. Soto, are you home? <sighs> Poor bastard. But, but, I just saw him earlier. Whatever this book did to him, drove him to suicide. Now you know why I wanted to forget it. He said he had heard voices in his head, growing louder. It wanted him to restore the pages of the book. They're coming, sir. The Compendium is a power source for the Mind Corruptor. But why? What's so important about the book? Even if we destroy the physical remains of the book, it still lives on. Let us not forget, sir, that the image of an atrocity holds the same husk power as one does in the flesh. Fascinating. It always comes back to the husk stage, doesn't it? Scientist, archivist, help me get these doors and windows blocked. No! You get what we seek. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Sir, it's outside. It has us cornered. Sir, I'm detecting at least 50 hostiles outside. We are outnumbered. No backup. No plan B. We'll retreat into the basement. Sir, you need to see this. Not only was the Mind Corruptor tormenting Soto this whole time, but it was also using his house as a breeding ground. It wanted to use the Compendium to release its brothers and sisters from the Abyss. This must be what it meant. They thrive off the husk's energy that the book gives off. Burn the Compendium and destroy any drawing Soto made. He'll burn the whole goddamn house down. Nothing except us makes it out of here. The Mind Corruptor and its minions are still outside, sir. But the Compendium is a power source. It'll weaken it. Once we light this place up, we'll shoot our way out. Mr. Sanders, Miss Conroy, arm yourselves. I feel... Sir, they're breaking through the front door. Mr. Sanders, are you all right? That's strange. I... <coughs> oh my god, Quentin! Mission? I don't feel so good. Me either, son. It's getting into our heads. Don't let it corrupt your mind. <coughs> Sir, I'm hallucinating. Sir. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna take a rest here. Nobody falls asleep. God damn it, that's an order. <coughs> that's important. Contacting the director. We are in need of assistance. Emissaries are down. I repeat, emissaries are down. Dost thou truly believe I am so naive as to remain oblivious to thy anticipated betrayal? What are you on about? Madman! I've done nothing! These atrocities have been instrumental in awakening my understanding. They have imparted revelations to me, Augustine. I'm aware that you have dispatched a missive to the Vatican, informing them of my actions. You, more than anyone, should comprehend the Church's propensity for conserving its archaic traditions and its resistance to progress. You are all too myopic to perceive the truth unfolding before your very eyes. Release me. I've done no such thing. I had held hope that this compendium might serve as a conduit for unveiling the truth to them. Alas, my own arrogance clouded my vision. The Church shall persist in its obstinacy, as shall you. Therefore, I shall exhibit to them the true potential of these atrocities. What? What is that? The core upends mentum, 
as per my investigations, constitutes a species of atrocity, dependent on living entities to sustain their vitality, or else they face demise. In their nascent stage, they manifest as diminutive slugs, incessantly demanding nourishment for survival, ceaseless sustenance. It is not an exaggeration to assert that they thrive upon the very essence of their host's souls. Benedict, thou wouldst not offer me as sustenance to this monstrous entity. Unshackle me, madman. Oh, but I shall. I have languished under the church's tyrannical dominion for an eternity. They beckon us to wage sanctified warfare in the name of the Almighty against our very brethren, all while true adversaries fester amongst us. Right here, right now. Yet thy arrogance blinds thee to this verity, Augustine. Thus I entreat thee to unveil thine eyes to this revelation, and thereafter journey to the Vatican. Let them bear witness to the malevolence they have permitted to flourish through their inaction. It is only then that they may recognize the extent of their own blindness. that aren't mine <coughs> and this damn persistent cough won't go away <coughs> don't let it take you like it took me run from it Quentin get out of here thank you Mr. Hoffman so many corpses are here consumed by the mind corruptor some of these are Emissaries, medieval peasants, clergymen. All oh, these poor people. Damn thing consumed everything in its path. Who's there? Show yourself. My God, man. What happened to your eyes? Were you a monk who... Worked alongside Benedict? No. No, those robes are far too fanciful. Were you a pope? are missing from these corpses. I remember in one of the visions, Benedict said refusing to believe in the atrocities won't make them go away. But that's what you people did. You thought by refusing to believe in them would delegitimize their existence. Benedict warned you, but you bastards were too stubborn to listen. Even when confronted by an atrocity, you'd rather rip out your own eyes than accept them as fact. Hatred to seek thee out. 
Dorothy. Rothman. Emissaries. Where are you guys? Corrupted. Like the rest of them. You're the monk I've been seeing in my visions, Augustine. That name is dead to me. Are you controlling the mind corrupter in this state? We benefit from each other. It started off as a small, fleshy thing, dare I say innocent, in infant nature. It acts as a parasite, doesn't it? It's fueled by your hatred, your aggression. It never knew any better. The mind corrupter and its kin wish to expand, to branch out into a hive mind. Out into the stars. So that's what all the flesh pods are in that basement. Others of your kind. We fed off Paul Santo for years, but his life force was declining. Your kind is weak and brittle. You perish at mere sight of us. We need more. Over my dead body. Contacting the director. We are in need of assistance. Emissaries are down. I repeat, emissaries are down. The machine you call Roosevelt is attempting to resuscitate you and your friends. But it's too late. Quentin Sanders, you are one with the mind corruptor at long last. We will harvest the still warm flesh off your bones and ascend to higher planes of existence. Uh, uh, get off me! The information in which you hold in the darkest crevices of your cerebrum will be feasted on by our spawn. Your amygdala has been blessed with the black knowledge of the cosmic void, known only by a few. Charred to the farthest corners of oblivion and back, you will guide us into the next stage of evolution and scatter across the droplets of your cosmic infinity. Get the hell off me! Look what you're doing. Look at all those you've wronged. You're hurting people. Is that what your god would want, Augustine? The need for a god is not required, for we spring from a realm beyond the limited imagination and petty beliefs of the human mind. We are legion. No, because I believe there's still some human left within you. You may be bonded with this atrocity, but all those humans you've consumed, they're still very much in there, somewhere. And in my short time in this place, I've already felt the overwhelming grief and dread they've been experiencing. Imagine that, repeating for centuries and centuries on end. Is that what makes your god happy? <coughs> this place has been an empty void for far too long. <coughs> I'm the only one you've spoken to. I fear, for many years, you spent your life preserving the innocent grace of God. But in your arrogance, you've shown the hypocrisy and greed of man. I'm sorry, Augustine, but look at what you've become. Wake up! What happened? Quentin, are you all right? I'm fine. Is everyone still in one piece? What the hell is wrong with her? I showed it what it became. All the horrors it caused. All the beings it consumed. I think I drove it to suicide. <laughs> Let's hope it stays dead this time. What about these... offspring? Burn the whole goddamn house down. Everything will perish in this flame. This ends now. Well done, emissaries. You successfully completed your task and saved what was left of Foxwood. It's unfortunate the Mind Corruptors distorted our view of what Foxwood had truly become. 
this is an important reminder, though, that we still don't know all the capabilities of these atrocities and must always remain on high alert. Return to the crypt at once and get yourself some rest. Also proficient. I heard the scientists say something about Quentin Sanders and Dorothy Conroy being present. How is this possible? It's a long story, sir. I'm not even sure if I understand it. I want them taken back to the crypt for analysis. We must get to the bottom of this strange anomaly. Sir, if I may... Go ahead, Roosevelt. The husk levels within Quentin and Dorothy's systems have subsided. Dare I say, it has reversed. I theorize that the combined nature of the einstein rossen bridge mixed with the mind corruptor perishing allowed any husked particles to retract. Put that in the crypt memory banks, Roosevelt. I want the scientists to study this when we return. We might have just found a cure. Navigator, take the scientists and Roosevelt back with you. I need to escort Mr. Sanders and Miss Conroy back to the crypt. We only have so much room in the van. We'll see you guys back home. Tread carefully, gentlemen. So what happens to us? You never said. The director of the department wants to bring you two in. I'm assuming we'll conduct some experiments to see how this all happened. This hus stage has never been stopped before, so you two are first. And then we'll be able to go? The hus stage may have been stopped, but you two fell through the cracks of space-time. You two are considered anomalies which the department considers a problem. We need to make sure you two are safe, of course, but whether you're going to be able to leave, I, I can't say. I'm sorry. We have been through absolute hell, and now you want us to be locked away for the rest of our lives? To be experimented on? What happens in this world is not my doing, ma'am. I merely work for the department, and as an emissary of said department, I will uphold my duty. Dorothy, at least we'll be together there. I won't leave her side. Archivist, get the back of the van ready. I'm scared, Quentin. I just want to go home. And we will. In time. Everything in time. The van's all ready, sir. Don't cry. It'll be all right, I promise. The crypt isn't too shabby. I promise you. You'll both be looked after. Now let's go. It's easy for you to say you won't be the one locked up. As I said, Mr. Sanders, you'll both be looked after. Now, please. But just imagine. Just imagine how it would feel if something like this were to happen to you. Uh. Uh. Sir? Are you all right? You too. Get the hell out of here. What? But, but... There's been enough pain and misery. Now go before I change my mind. Here. Take this money. And get yourself as a room far away from here. It ain't much, but it'll get you going. Change your names and get far away from here. Build the laugh together. But, sir, the director said... Stand down, archivist. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I don't know what to say exactly. I... You don't have to say anything, Mr. Sanders. All I ask is that the pair of you keep a low profile. Try your best not to get caught up in any more atrocity business. The world's cold enough already. We'll try. Thank you, sir. What was that back there? If the director asks, you saw nothing. We'll tell them they vanished and were brought back to their own time. You seemed almost emotional, sir. I know we're not allowed to speak of our personal lives, but... I had a daughter and a wife. This was way back, about 30 years or so ago. We were coming home one night, and an anomaly manifested itself within the city walls. It ravaged through buildings, through cars, through people. I lost them both. Back then, there were no emissaries to deal with it. So I took it upon myself to avenge them, to seek out these foul creatures of the night. That's why I joined the emissaries when they first started up, to help make a difference. I'm so sorry. 
I couldn't even imagine the pain you went through. You see a lot of similar situations in this job, son. People lose loved ones. People die. It's like a cycle. When I, when I saw Quentin and Dorothy hold each other, when she said to imagine what it would be like, well, I, I don't have to imagine. I know the pain. I know the loss. God damn it, I'm tired of it, Archivist. I just want the cycle to end. Even if I can't save everyone, I know I can't, but knowing those two were able to make it out in one piece gives me a bit of closure. I think you did the right thing. I'm proud of you, sir. Thank you, son. Also, uh, something I didn't mention to the others. When we were inside the Mind Corruptor, got into our heads. It gave me visions. Dare I say, almost like a, uh, a premonition. A premonition? About what? Well, I can't say for sure now, but it's too early to be precise. I still find it rather concerning the director never clarified what those deceased emissaries were doing on the university grounds. Surely it was just miscommunication. Or maybe it was part of the hallucination. After what the Mind Corruptor showed me, I think it's something more. Something darker.